G'day, my name is Dean McAvoy. Uh, I'm a serial entrepreneur. I've started a few companies, lived over in Silicon Valley, uh, came back here and started Spreets and sold that to Yahoo. Uh, I'm also helping advise the MirrorD startups in this cohort of uh, MirrorD uh, startups, which is very exciting and super happy to be here. So I wanna to talk to you today a little bit about what it takes to do a great pitch. And so the, the first thing to understand is um, you gotta understand your customer. In any pitch, you gotta understand what is their buying process. And, and investors are exactly the same. You're selling them an idea. You're selling them, the, you're selling them the certainty that you're creating something really valuable. So what you gotta re really do first of all is understand their buying process. What's the process that an investor goes through to understand uh, how to make an investment? So that's step number one. Step number two is your job as the, as the pitcher, whether you be up on stage or face to face, is not to, not to close them on day one. It's to really kind of just work out how to move them to the next stage of the buying process. So it's not, you know, it's not about, I've never heard of anyone going up on stage and, uh, and an investor running up with a check and writing it straight away. There's a process they go through and your job's just to move them to that next stage of the process. Now the first part of your pitch is the most important part. So the first 20 seconds of your pitch when you're standing up, if you're on stage, um, so first of all, it's important to understand the environment of your pitch. I understand you guys are probably gonna be up in front of a crowd, but maybe your pitch will be one-on-one. -on -one. So make sure you understand the environment you're in, and then keep in mind your goal is just understand what this person or this group of people think about me today, and how do I change their thinking so that they will take the action that I want them to do, so that they will come up and give me a business card, so that they will ask me for a next meeting. So understand how do you change their thinking about you so that it moves it to the next stage. So first of all, uh, an investor, they hear thousands of pitches every day. So you know, you've really got to stand out. And so like I said, that first 20 seconds, you've got to stand up and uh, excite them about your problem, uh, excite them about you being smart and intelligent person to kind of do it, and excite them about the opportunity of making money and give them a little fear of missing out because Actually, the only thing that motivates investors is the idea that they're gonna miss out on the next big, biggest deal. So once you've nailed your first 20 seconds, you've got them excited, um, they're leaning in, they're ready to kind of do the next, uh, the next part of the, uh, the pitch. What I like to do at the start of a pitch is really um, engage them with a story that starts to do a few things. One, it'll, it'll often uh, identify how smart and intelligent and clever you are. It'll, it'll also often identify your authentic connection with the problem. Uh, and, and then how, how you've gone about kind of starting this. Uh, so the most important thing is, is that you identify the problem clearly so that people can understand it. Uh, articulate your solution in a short, uh, succinct way. So um, try not to use the cliches that investors hear all the time of I'm the Uber of dog washing. Um, because like, you know, they, they hear that a lot. Uh, and if you, if, you, if you have to rely on that to explain what you do, um, it's really as a last resort, but if you can really just articulate succinctly what you do, um, how you solve that problem. Now the best thing to be able to pitch in a startup pitch is traction. So if you can walk up and say, you know, we've already got 100,000 users, we're making millions of dollars, you know, that's obviously the best kind of thing to, to pitch in terms of traction. Now often at this early stage you don't, and so um, the next most important thing to pitch is your team. So uh, you've, already, you've already established your credibility of how awesome you are as an individual and smart and you've uncovered this problem and you have an authentic connection with this problem. Um, but then the team that's gonna bring this to light is gonna be super important. It's really important that when you're attracting people to your business and when you're attracting investors and other people to it, that you really pitch it as a movement. So no one wants to come and join a company so that you, know, you can come and help, help me pay for another set of golf clubs. You've got to make it seem like it's, it's a company that people are joining, that, that, that they are part of. It's a we movement. It's not your company. It's not someone else's company. It's a, it's, a, it's a movement that they're joining and they're part of. So it's really important that you articulate your business as something bigger than who you are. It's not something that people are joining to help make you rich. It's some movement that they're joining to help make the world better. And so that's a really important distinction. That'll help attract great team members to your team. The next thing you need to talk about is your market size. Now, everyone, everyone's gonna get out there a pitch that they're in a billion dollar market and that all they need to do is uh, get 2% of this market and they'll be multi-millionaires. That's a very naive way of pitching about market. Now, yes, it's important to understand how big a market is, but everything's a big market. 
what people really need to articulate is how they're going to attack the market. So Peter Thiel talks about this really well in his book, Zero to One, that when you launch your, uh, your startup, you want to monopolize a very small market. So basically you want to know that you are the, uh, you know, you're targeting the dog owners in Surrey Hills with uh, poodles. And that market is, is how you're going to uh, address and, and monopolize that market. But then it's really important to articulate how you, how you roll out to the next market so that it becomes a big and huge uh, addressable market. That's a really clever way to understand and talk about market. So yes, it's a big vision where you're attacking the pet food market, which is a $100 billion industry, but actually specifically what we're gonna do first is about uh, the, the poodles at Surrey Hills, and here's how we're gonna address that. So it's almost like talking about market, but also go to market at the same time. So that's a really important distinction which will help you stand out from a lot of people that just need that 1% of people in China to buy their thing to make them a multi-billion dollar billionaire. Um, so don't do that, please. So make sure you've done your research, make sure you know if there are competitors out there. And even if there's no one doing what you're doing, what do people in the market use as the next best alternative? So how do people actually solve that problem at present? Because that is, a comp that is competition. Um, yeah, there may be nobody that builds your widget in your certain way or has your software service that does it for free. Now it's really important if you're in the beginning too, uh, to, to understand how you're gonna sell this process or how you're gonna sell this business. Because if you're required to go in and spend three weeks demoing and understanding and showing people this and then you're charging people $100 a month, you know, you're gonna go out of business pretty quickly. Now, in the beginning you might do that just to kind of uh, learn about the market and to train your sales algorithm. But if that's your ultimate way of selling, then you, you, you're really out of business. So it's understanding what's the cost of acquisition of your customers, and then what's the lifetime value of the service you provide. And you need to tell a story of how that's gonna be uh, very favorable. Obviously, low cost of acquisition and high lifetime value of customers. Um, finally, uh, you really just wanna sum up with, so how your business, how your service is 10 times better than everyone else in the market. And I always find this is a nice way to finish. Um, you know, articulate uh, and show that your, your product is 10 times better. So if, if you build a product already, I probably would put uh, you know, a live recording, not a, not a live demo, a live recording of a demo um, of what you're doing. And, and that's, a, that's often a good way, I think, to kind of finish. Remember, your number one job is about selling uncertainty. How do you convince me as someone who doesn't know you that you're gonna do something that makes a difference in this world. So your job is to get out there and sell uncertainty and that's a whole combination of the things that I said here today. It's about team, it's about exciting people at the start so that they lean in and, and, um, and get involved. It's about the team, it's about articulating uh, the problem and making sure you have an authentic connection to it. It's about uh, clearly and succinctly nailing what your solution is so people remember it and understand it. It's about understanding the market and articulating your go-to-market in a way that's kind of clear and, and clever. Uh, make sure you know your business model so that you can kind of, that your actual um, cost of acquisition is less than your lifetime value. Uh, and then finally, um, sum up, make sure you've kind of clearly articulated how your product is better than, 10 times better than the next best alternative in the market. And that's always a good kind of um, closing moment. And then uh, finish with a follow-up, finish with something that, that gives you and ask and a reason to stay connected and then make sure you do what you say you're gonna do and if you do, you're gonna nail it.